So we're gonna check out some essential chords when it comes to playing folk. Although we're not just gonna be looking at the chords, but also what to do with them. So let's start with some fundamentals. So let's start things off in the key of G, by far the most popular key when it comes to playing folk. And we'll just do a one, four, five. So G, C, and D. All this stuff can be applied to minor chords as well though. But the first thing you wanna know is you can throw the capo on you know, anywhere, like say second fret, and just throw those shapes up, you know, two frets up where they would normally be, and it's the same thing. But now, in this case, would be the key of A, so it would now be sounding like A, D, and E, even though it's those G, C, D shapes. So keep that in mind. We can throw the capo anywhere and just move this stuff around, and it keeps it a lot easier keeping these same shapes. You can just keep repeating ideas. So we can throw on some embellishments. So say we get back to G, C, D, right, regular key. You can throw in embellishments like this. So, first off, you know, instead of playing G like this, which is how I did it when I first started playing guitar, it's really better to play G like this when it comes to this style because you can switch it from G to C real fast. Some songs do that, like, just like, where you can, you know, you can see the fingers, small movements versus this, it's a big movement. So, you know, I thought that this felt really strong and I always see this written in books this way sometimes or see people doing it, I'm like, oh, how do they do that? But like anything, you just gotta keep doing it and you will get stronger with your fingers and you'll just get more used to it. And this way you can do these embellishments. Whereas if you're this way, you're kind of stuck, you know? So it opens up your fingers like that. So specifically, what am I doing with the embellishments? But I'm just playing a G and then throwing on right here, a C. And then for the C, I was throwing just that right there. And for the D, this right here. So there's so many more you can do, but I'll keep it simple and just show you those three, but I, you know, urge you to experiment with, you know, trying out like, like, ooh, that doesn't sound so good, but like, like ooh, that sounds good, you know? You know, like, ooh, that's a like really nice, pretty sounding thing. So kind of experiment around with different chords. Uh, you can kind of play around with these chords. It's not so much the chords themselves, it's the things you can do around with them that's gonna make the, uh, the difference. So specifically what I was doing with this, when you throw on a C with the G, is it makes it a G sus chord. And then you can kind of pull it off, right? So for techniques, I'm doing pull-offs, hammer-ons. That stuff makes it sound real nice. But those sus chords, you know, and then over here for D, this adding this note right here, makes it a sus as well. It's probably the most popular sus chord you'll see on guitar is that D sus to D. So throwing on those little embellishments with hammer-ons and pull-offs can make a big difference. But let's take things a little further into a different key and a different location. I originally filmed this whole video on the Saco River in New Hampshire, but I am a little bit new to filming outside and it's a challenge. Just like learning guitar, there is a big learning curve. And if you're new to guitar, just keep that in mind. There is so many challenging things. You just gotta keep at it and you'll just keep getting better day after day when you're playing. And I'm doing the same thing with filming. So there was one segment out of the filming that I could I could, I could save because a lot of it came was out of focus. I had problems with exposure, all the stuff that I'm learning. So let's, let's head over there and then we'll head back to the studio after this one section. So now let's try things in the key of C and we'll do the same things before a one, four, five. But in this case, it will be C, F, G, and C. So we can do something like this. Right, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm not playing the full F chord. You, you rarely hear that in, in folk music, um, which is a relief to uh, people who are beginners because the F chord is really the number one thing I see of people quitting guitar, they get to that F and they think that they have to play it like this, they see it in a book or something, and it's just like, oh, it's just so hard. So just play these three, or play these three plus this note here, and that is technically a slash chord. It's an F over C, they call it. So you may see that written somewhere, F slash C. So it is an F chord, but it has a C in the bass, meaning the C is the lowest note. And uh, it's, it's way easier to play and it sounds nice and 
it actually transitions way n nicer to the C to, you know, I'm sorry, F to C. You know, it's it's more soulful sounding, right? The, versus this giant, big boxy sound. So keep that in mind, there's so much you can do with slash chords. Now we can also add in some embellishments like I did before. So same idea, like this note right here. Here, you can do this note right here. And then G, the same thing from before, you know. And I'm not gonna get into all these little embellishments and things you can do, but these are things to try out in your own. Just try a little adding on notes and pulling off notes here and there and kind of just, see, you know, see or hear what sounds kind of, you know, good to uh, your ears. Now, another thing we can do is something like this. And that is throwing in a bass run. So on that G chord, I did this. So something like that where you have the low notes moving, it's kind of, that's playing the melody and that's moving it somewhere. And that's called a bass run because it's like what a bass, you know, uh, instrument um, does. And it can be just simple stuff, just like, you know, you just play this note right here, right before the C. So you go G, B, C, or you could go, you could go up the scale. Right, so bass runs, slash chords, all kinds of stuff that you can do to spice up just these regular uh, major chords. But let's take this a little further and let's add a little something to the chords and add it to another key. So now we are back to the studio. I wish we were on the river the whole time, but next time I do it, I, I'll make sure to get these uh, these kinks worked out with uh, when it comes to focus and, the, and lighting and things like that. Or I'll try my best, because uh, again, it's a learning curve and we are supposed to be making mistakes when we learn a new thing and uh, that's okay. So let's try it in the key of D, right? So in this case, we'll have D, G, and A. So one, four, and five. Same relationship as everything we've been doing so far. And let's try adding on some of the same stuff we've done and adding on some new things like this. So what was I doing there? But I was doing, you know, some of the same, you know, embellishments and things, but I was adding on some sevenths. So I was making D to D7, which actually is a note, this one note right here, that's all it is, that's C, that makes it outside of the key, just that one note, but it's okay, because it's what they call a pull chord. It pulls it, it pulls this note down here in the four chord, in this case, G, right? So. It gives it some movement, or stick to the folk, the folk fingers, right? And then for A, did the same thing, and that's the five chord. That is by far the most common that you'll see turn into a dominant seventh. And then I threw on some extra little fancy things there. You don't necessarily need that, but you could take this right here, this one, slide it up three frets, and that's still going to be that's an easy way to do it. It's still going to be an A seven chord. So to recap, we've got you know, a different ways of using the fingers like this to throw on these embellishments and doing hammer-ons, hammer pull-offs, sus chords, throwing in those bass notes to add a little bit of movement. And then of course you can throw in dominant seventh chords and you can do all this stuff with the capo. So you can just stick to these three different kind of chord, these keys with these chord shapes or just stick it all to G, C, and D. So everything I've shown you here is gonna help you get better at playing folk, but there's this one thing that will kind of tie it all together that's just as important as the chords and what you do with them. So check out this video here where I show you what it is so you can take your playing to the next level when it comes to playing folk.